Yo, what's good, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to Beyond the Lines podcast, airing Mondays and Fridays, twice a week, every week. Me, Felipe Fonsas, and Jared Gamble are going to be bringing it to you. Give you a little intro to Jared real quick in a second. A little rundown of the show is uh, we're going to be doing Felipe's five takes. So I'm going to give five takes on five topics I think are the most important right now, or most relevant to me. Most of them sports-related. Doesn't have to be sports. Uh, if I'm interested in the music, some whatever it is, Kendrick Lamar's dropping an album. I want to talk about that. I'm going to bring that up. After I give my five takes, we're going to switch over to split screen discussion segment. Jared's going to come in, dispute three takes out of the five takes I, I, I made. He's going to choose the worst take, the best take, and the hottest take. We're going to go into it a little bit right there. He can destroy me if he wants, call me a terrible analyst, whatever it is. Or he can, you know, say, hey, you did a good job, whatever, whatever it is. And we're going to be able to discuss it there. Right after that's over. We're gonna head into garbage time. Uh, really, just shoot the shit last few, last last couple minutes, and just kind of talk whatever's on our mind, whatever's happening, man. And that's how the show's gonna go. So, without further ado, I'm gonna bring us in, bring Jared in real quick, split screen, and then we're gonna get the show started after the low intro. Let's go. Jared, what's good, baby? What you got for us? Man, what's up, my guy, man? Beyond the Line podcast, right here. You know, first episode with me, and you know, my guy Felipe. We've gone way back. We've been. We've been talking about this for uh, since high school, man. We're four years removed, and um, you know we're just finally getting rolling and going. And Beyond the Line podcast is what it is. So uh, you know, follow us, keep track with us, and we're gonna hit you with some uh, some good debates and uh, some good news and topics, man. Let's get it going. That's it, Beyond the Lines, baby. Mondays and Fridays. Let's sure. go. All right, so first things first, man. And getting to the first take. Uh, you know, last day is docu- docu-series on Chicago Bulls and Michael Jordan got me thinking, man. And I'm going to get into it in a second, but I'll give you the take real quick. LeBron James can never be the GOAT. He can never be the GOAT. He can never be considered the greatest player of all time. And the reason I got to thinking that was because through watching the documentary last night, and they were talking about Michael Jordan and his ascension, Right. Great individual player, lots of individual accolades. Until he, he really became a champion, he he had that kind of moniker where it was like, oh, he, he's a great individual player, but he's not a he's not a champion. And they came to him and they were like, yo, you know, Michael, you know, you got to be more of a team player. You know, there's no I in team. He said, yeah, there's an I in win though. And that just got me thinking about Kobe Bryant. And, you know, famously responded similarly to that question, say, yeah, there's no there's no I in team, but there's an M and E in that mother. So similar mentalities and and my thinking is that if you want to be as successful as Kobe and Michael and you're talking about winning five, six rings, um, Michael never lost in the finals, um, all those accolades, MVP, scoring championships, everything like that that you're talking about with Michael and Kobe, then you're talking about you know, that score first mentality, that attack, that me guy at first. Because you know and you trust yourself that, look, I'm the best player on this team. So the best chance for us to win, for we to win, is me, right? And then as we saw the ascension of Michael Jordan and everything, we saw that when he got those double and triple teams, he was able to dish the ball out. He was able to find if John Paxson and Steve Kerr's. And Kobe was able to do the same thing with Ron Artest and Derek Fisher. And the same thing Powell we saw later in his career. All that, right? So I think that mentality. And then you think about LeBron James, and it's kind of the opposite. It's that pass first. It's that you know facilitator mindset. So at the end of games, he ain't thinking, oh, I'm going to take this shot. I'm going to go win this game myself. He's thinking, oh, who's going to be open, right? I'm going to make the right play. I'm not saying, like, don't, don't make the, 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 the right basketball play. I'm saying, look, man, if, if I got the ball and I'm the best player in the team, the right basketball play is me scoring. And if it's impossible for me to score because they got two, three defenders on me and I can judge that myself, then I'll make the pass, but I gotta be willing to, you know, take the sh- take the shot myself, go score myself, and that, you know, that killer attack mindset. We think of the greatest players of all time, the Jordans, the Kareem Abdul Jabbar's, you know, scores, Larry Bird scores. Who can also facilitate, right? But you don't think Magic Johnson has the greatest player of all time? Uh, so, you know, new generations talk about LeBron James, but I'm here to tell you that's just not the case. LeBron James cannot be the greatest player of all time because of his mindset, his you know, pass first mentality. 
Now, second take, switching over to, to the gridiron a little bit. NFL draft just happened Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, but big deal on Thursday was the Packers drafting Jordan Love early, right? You got Aaron Rodgers right there. And then the next day, early in the second round, the Eagles drafting uh, Jalen Hurts out of, out of Oklahoma, played for Alabama, played in the championship and all that. Um, and both of these teams, what they have in common is franchise quarterbacks. Aaron Rodgers, Carson Wentz. Now, don't get it twisted with Aaron Rodgers. I hear a lot of people talking about, you know, Jordan Love is 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 threatening Aaron Rodgers. Oh, like, like, what does this mean for Aaron Rodgers? Man, come on. You're talking about the most talented quarterback of all time. The most talented quarterback in the league right now. I, well, I give that to Patrick Mahomes. But over all these years, definitely the most talented. And his spot is, again, threatened by a quarterback that wasn't even consensus top five in, the, in a draft, right? You know, I'm not talking about consensus top five in the past. I'm talking about in this draft itself, in this draft alone, right? Not even guys that are consensus top five are, are, are starters right away. Uh, definitely not Jordan Love. Jordan Love is, is a prospect. He's going to get better. He had his comparisons to Patrick Mahomes as far as his raw intangibles. Um, also, those comparisons are, are valid. Patrick Mahomes wasn't considered a starter right away. He, he, was, he was a lot of people were high about his intangibles, but didn't really know how he would fit in the NFL system coming from that air raid offense in Texas Tech. So Jordan Love, similar. All I'm saying is don't be worried about Aaron Rodgers. That his job is safe. And just as Aaron Rodgers had to wait for Brett Favre to leave, so he should have that example, he doesn't have to worry about it. Jordan Love is gonna have to wait for Aaron Rodgers to leave. Now Carson Wentz is different. Carson Wentz, inconsistent, turnovers of uh, fumble problems, injuries, that that's a different story. I think I'm a little worried about uh Carson Wentz. If I'm Carson Wentz, I don't really care because I don't give a you know I don't give a crap about the Eagles. But if I'm Carson Wentz, I'm looking over my shoulder. Jordan, you know, the Eagles with so many needs across across the offense, across the defense, receiver needs. I know they addressed it in the first round with, with one receiver, but at the same time, you need more than that. Defensively, the secondary was burnt toast last year. You need to address that. And instead of doing that early, you get Jalen Hurts in the second round. I don't know. That's very early to be drafted a guy that, oh, let, I just want a good backup. If I'm Carson Wentz, I'm watching, I'm watching my back a little bit. You know, the injury questions, the turnovers. I, I haven't been very consistent lately if I'm Carson Wentz. And I see a quarterback that has a lot of potential that needs development. But who knows? You know, he can play. And I'm not... I'm not too convinced about Carson Wentz that my job is 100% safe. Now, Steph Curry and Dwayne Wade were on um, IG Live together, right? Instagram Live together, kind of messing around, talking to each other. And Dwayne Wade, towards the end of it, came on and was like, yo, so I got to ask, our big three versus your big three, who would win? So he's referring to, you know, big three in Miami, LeBron, Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, if they could be the... Uh, Warriors big three with, with Steph, Clay, and, and KD. No, <laughs> no way. Are you kidding me? Look, man, you're talking about the Warriors <laughs> before KD, 7-3-9. You add KD, you add the greatest scorer of all time. Scorer. I'm not saying the greatest shooter because he has Steph Curry. But you have the greatest shooter and the greatest scorer, and you have the second greatest shooter of all time and, and, and Clay. You have three of the top five greatest scorers of all time on one team. The Heat don't stand a chance. The Heat were put together, a, a great individual talent and friends put together on the same team, but they had to mesh together. They had to work. And even then, they, they didn't have the, the, the greatest chemistry. They were, you know, they were extremely fun to watch. Like, they were, they were, that was prime time. That was entertainment to the, to the fullest. You know, even before the game started with the alley-oops and the dunks and everything that we're doing before the game just for entertainment's sake. I mean, that was flashy, right? But as a team, big three versus big three, I don't even know why Dwayne Wade was the one that asked me, like, what are you doing, dude? Like, y'all don't stand a chance. Y'all don't stand any chance against against those Warriors. Y'all don't stand a chance. Y'all don't stand a chance against the Spurs. What makes you think you're gonna stand a chance against the Warriors? Uh, the, 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 the Warriors in their prime, the big three Warriors. Like, are you like come on man? Come on. <laughs> That's, it's funny to me. It's funny to me that he brought that up and he was pretty adamant about it, about them being good and that he, he wished they could have played each other. But if y'all would have played, y'all would have lost a seven game series in five games. Y'all lost in five games and if y'all didn't get sweep, it's what? Y'all could have got swept. It's that reality. <laughs> Sorry. The New England Patriots in this NFL draft that just happened this past weekend had 10 picks and didn't draft a quarterback. But they drafted a kicker. 
Okay, not to draft Bill Belichick. Said all it wasn't in our plans not to draft the quarterback, but you know it's what they did, and they drafted a kicker. If you really want to draft the quarterback, you could have, you should have, or I don't know if you should have or shouldn't have, but you could have, and you did. So they must be pretty confident in in the team they got right now and the quarterback they got. And I'll tell you what, I think that's reasonable, and I back them up on that. I think the Patriots are going to be more successful this year, win more games than the Buccaneers. And we all know about the rivalry that's happened in the past. And with the, with the success that, that's happened with the Patriots, there has been that, like, slight rivalry. It's always been kind of talked about, kept under the rug, though, you know, around uh, Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. And we all, everybody wants to talk, the media wants to talk. Who's more responsible for, for the success they have, for the dynasty? Two dynasties, right? Who's more successful, Tom Brady or Bill Belichick? I've always thought Bill Belichick was more, was, was more accountable for that. Yeah, I, th- I thought he was more responsible for it. I think, um, you know, it was, it was the organization that really won those. And you could get another quarterback and put him in and you're just going to be maybe not quite as successful, but you're going to be very successful. And we saw that with Matt Castle when he came in in 2009 and they went 10 and 6, right? The same when, when Tom Brady was hurt and missed the whole season. Tom, Matt Castle went 10 and 6. Matt Castle went to the Cowboys when Roman went down and they went, they went 4 and 12 that year, right? So same quarterback shows you the difference in organizations. I think the Patriots are very confident in what they have in Jared Stidham, fourth round pick from last year, who's supposed to be the starter this year. And I think reasonably so. And the fact that they didn't draft the quarterback completely shows that. You know what I mean? And look, man, if you're really not going to draft the quarterback and you draft a kicker, and we all know Bill Belichick is humble and doesn't really want to talk about stuff after, doesn't want to really want to make the headlines. Said, oh, we, you know, we, we, it wasn't our plans to draft the quarterback. No, it wasn't. You could have drafted a quarterback if, if, if it was in your plans. You, know, you had 10 picks. You drafted a kicker. A kicker. Somebody you could get off the streets and kick. Anybody can kick, man. And kicking nowadays, man, they, they all suck, man. They all miss in these game one and field. Like, I, don't, I, I hate kicking, man. But you could have drafted a quarterback. You drafted a kicker instead. Don't tell me, don't tell me it wasn't even, you, you know, you try to, you trying to stay low key. The, the Patriots are very confident right now, and reasonably so. They will win more games than the Buccaneers, I guarantee it, I guarantee it. The addition of C.D. Lamb on the Dallas Cowboys gives them the best offense in the NFL. Not only that, but the best offense the Cowboys have had since the 1990s. You're talking about an extremely potent offense, and yeah, greater than the ones Romo had with T.O. and and, and Marion Barber and all that, and that Romo later had with DeMarco Murray and Dez Bryant. No, this offense was the best since the 90s. Receiving core, Amari Cooper, maybe the best route runner in the league. Um, I would say most defensive backs would consider him a top five receiver in the league, a top seven for sure receiver in the league. Uh, definitely in the league, definitely a number one receiver. Michael Gallup really came up in his second year last year. Deep threat and really ascended, you know, alongside the benefit of having Amari Cooper take all this coverage and stuff like that. And now you have CeeDee Lamb, who's a bona fide number one wide receiver. Uh, a bad team could draft CeeDee Lamb and he's going to be their number one wide receiver. And a good team could draft him and he's going to be their, their number one soon. I don't know how that's going to develop with the Cowboys because I do think CeeDee Lamb has the potential to be better than Amari Cooper. But at this moment, Amari Cooper is. Very damn good, and we know that. But C.D. Lamb's addition is going to be is going to be something special. But that receiving court with Ezekiel Elliott, and I know Ezekiel Elliott has slowed down a little bit, but guess what? He still leads the league in rushing since 2016. He was fourth in the league last year after a very slow start, and um, he still the ball. He is Dak Prescott. You say whatever you want about him, but he can play. You know, he ain't Aaron Rodgers. No, he ain't Patrick Mahomes. No, but he can play. And he's even if he's a middle of the league quarterback. Guess what? He has all these weapons around him. The offensive line. I know Travis Frederick retired. I know that. But look, uh, <laughs> Tyron Smith didn't retire. Lyle Collins didn't leave. Zach Martin didn't leave. So you still have your offensive line and unit. They, um, they, they drafted the center from, from Wisconsin. You know, perfect replacement for, for Travis Frederick. And they're going to be able to work that offensive line and see what they can do with it. But this offense as a whole is extremely, extremely set, unique, unique. Uh, the most, the most talented in the NFL. You, you can talk about the Chiefs, but they don't have the receiver, the receiving unit that the Cowboys have as far as pure talent, right? The offensive line is is good. Patrick Mahomes is amazing, and that's what kind of keeps the Chiefs with the Cowboys. If the Cowboys have Patrick Mahomes, they'd be the greatest offense of all time. And I, I, I say that with confidence. This offense is the best offense in the league. The only one competing is the Chiefs. But even 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 then, the Cowboys are are, are going ahead. Big Bay, so. Now you're giving out your five, you know, your, your fleet base five facts, you know, little, little cool, little just of your uh, little things you got. 
I'm gonna head in straight through with, uh, with what I think is your worst take, and that uh, worst take. Energy, your your worst take, man. Uh, the Michael Jordan. I know you're on a high right now because you know all the last dance stuff. Saying though, uh, you can't be a, a champion with the, without that mindset, or can't be the goat without that. You know that killer, the I mindset. Like, no, magic, that's, or, man, I'm telling you that like, that that takes you that takes you to the next level. Like MJ and Kobe, that's fine, but I think I think in a way it's kind of lazy, man, because LeBron does have got three, and sure he's you know he you can argue though LeBron might be the un, most uh, unlucky superstar we've ever had in a way with dealing with injuries, going up against a lot of dynasties, and but that's that's for something else. I think I think LeBron when people say he doesn't have that killer instinct or that mentality, which I think is false, because y'all say when. Oh, he's the pass first. He's not score first. Well, man, he might not be score first, but he's probably going to lead, you know, for uh, – he's going to probably have the most points ever. And I think that's I think that's pretty good for somebody who's not score first, all right? And I don't think he's necessarily pass first. I think it's more so right play first. I don't think we should be critiquing or, um, you know, um, minimizing somebody for making – being a right play first type of player because he – yeah – there might be four or five seconds on the shot clock, and he might, you know, dribble, dribble left, three dribbles hard, and there might be two, three guys coming. He's not going to pull that. He might kick it to the corner to Bosch or to whoever his guy is, you know, back in the day, if it's Ray Allen, Kyle Corver, whoever it is. I think it's more so it's right play, LeBron, not so much I'm not a killer because I'm not shooting a dumb shot. So I think, I think he does have a killer mindset because we've seen him in the playoffs. He's got the highest – uh, what is he? Twelve or twenty-three in go-ahead or uh, uh, game-winning oh, shots? Oh I mean, I think that's killer to me. All right, look, man. Like, I think there's a difference between yeah, he's he's taking those shots, and yeah, he's the right play kind of guy first. But at the same time, he's still approaching it in that way. He's still approaching a last second, last minute situation to where like. I'm going to find the right play for my teammates. I think the difference is when you're talking about a Jordan, you're talking about a Kobe, and you're talking about guys in the league today, which I think uh, are more towards that kind of Kobe Jordan mindset, like uh, Jason Tatum and and, and those players of those likes, is that they're not – they're not necessarily not trying to make the right play, but they're worried. They're thinking about what's the best move that we can make to win. And I'm the best player on this team, so I need the ball in my hands. And if there's one guy on me, maybe there's two guys on me, but I got a good look. I'm going to take the shot because the best, you know, the best chances we have to win is if I take the shot. So it's not necessarily, oh, let's make, you know, uh, I'm making the right basketball move. I think LeBron James goes into it and he's thinking, you know, as soon as that guy comes on me, he's too technical with it. As soon as that second guy comes, I mean, somebody's open. Yeah, it's open. Now, obviously, now it's five on four, it, like, as far as the rest of your team. We get that. But that doesn't mean that somebody – somebody that's open, put it – you know, get somebody from, from the block here, somebody that's that's wide open. I'd rather have LeBron take it with three guys on him. That's my point. Where a player of that mentality, somebody like Kobe, somebody like Jordan, is going to be thinking, I'm going to score this basket. And guess what? If there's three guys on him, they're going to pass the ball. But that's not the point. See, it, it, I think I think it's a, it's hard to it's 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 a it's a kind of a you know a subject to where how we like we might not play basketball like professionally, but sometimes how you other people want to see the game. You know what I mean? So it's like a either here or here. So I I just believe in if the right play is doesn't like when you I don't believe LeBron goes in. And it's like, all right, so I don't think he might not be – I don't think he is that technical with it. I think he lets the game come to him. LeBron is one of the best players who let the games come to him. He slows everything down when it's getting scared scared time. And he's – I don't believe that because the facts in the playoffs, he – all time, he's got the highest uh, field goal percentage when it comes to, you know, game tying or game winning three – or uh, shots. And look at Mag- people, players like Magic. It's not just uh, Kobe and Jordan, you know, who got that. You mean you got players like Magic. You got players like uh, Larry who would dish the rock, who would be right play guys, and they're successful. You know, Magic's got what five championships. Larry's got two or Magic, three. Magic, Magic is the closest player, or LeBron is the closest player to Magic. So I think those two players. Um, See, I don't know if I each other like that, but I do think that you would consider Kareem Abdul-Jabbar a better basketball player than 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 Magic, and I think it's because. Arguably. 
Like if if Magic was a, had that kind of mentality that Kobe does, that Jordan does, then mm-hmm. and that Larry does, because Larry was like that too. Well, the Man, difference I, maybe the, he, the difference between the real the real quick difference between uh, uh, Magic and I, I don't Magic and LeBron are similar in a stance of uh, getting their guys ready and you know putting them in position to score. But Magic ain't even on the same stratosphere as LeBron when scoring the basketball. LeBron can do it. LeBron can do it. You know, he can get in the post. He, he, he put his head down with a spin move. It's game over. He can pull up from 30. I don't think Magic is the same stratosphere with that because I think LeBron will go down. As, he wants to score. We've seen it. It happens. He can do it. But, you know, it, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's like a – I don't know how to put it, but a here or there, how you want to see – how we like to see the game, and that's kind of how we, and how we roll with when we – discuss uh the that kind of topic no i get that and, and real quick real quick just address something you said a couple minutes ago you said lebron is unlucky to come in come up in the era he's coming in right now as far as having to face the dynasties jordan didn't face great teams we just saw the documentary last night talking about how he had to face the the, the pistons you know the Cavs were really good during that time uh later in his career the jazz were really good so he, fa- he faced really good teams too like let's not Let's not say LeBron is facing tougher competition, team-wise. Hey, Jordan faced nine Hall of Famers in his finals career, and all six of them, only nine. LeBron's up more north of 20. Yeah, but that's the point, is Jordan's competition was stiffer getting to the finals than LeBron playing in a weak ass. Sure, sure, sure. And your best take was that you saying the uh, the Warriors would, the Warriors big three would, you know, kind of smash the Heat big three back in their prime. You know, it was asked by um, it was on a joint IG live by Dwayne and uh, Stephen Curry, and you said, you know, Dwayne Wade asked them whose big three would win back in their primes, and I got to agree, man. I think I think the Warriors' big three with uh not with Draymond, with Kevin, Steph, and Clay. Got to got to point got to point that one out. I think those that big three would would um, would take down the Heat big three, and the reason being is. I mean, a juggernaut of that caliber offensively and that scary and can pull up anywhere who can, you know, two of those guys can defend, you know, really well. And it's just, I think when you got such of a clay and a Steph on the wing, man, Kevin's just on a, he's just, Kevin's on an island by himself and you can't, you can't, you can't double him. You can't really help. You can't help off those guys. So I think with those three were a better mix on the court together than Chris Bosh, LeBron, and Dwayne Wade. Right, right. Well, yeah, with Bron, Dwayne Wade, and – well, first of all, it was just Bron and, and D. Wade. You're talking about two athletic specimens, and yet towards the end of that run with them, Dwayne Wade was – And knees are shot. It wasn't, wasn't, wasn't prime D. Wade, wasn't flesh. But those are two great athletes, but it's not – it's not like – if you're think, thinking about, oh, I'm going to get two great players that are going to fit together perfectly, that's not D. Wade and LeBron, but they were – a great show to watch but when you're talking about production and a team uh team-wide effort that's gonna produce the best yeah i don't think it's any question and even that like with the warriors the warriors were great before kd was there 173 games k i don't know if kd coming it definitely didn't make their chemistry better but now you're just adding another guy that could win iso um can score however he wants whenever he wants and can defend anybody so that just adds another great uh defender as well and we saw how he played against LeBron and, and defended LeBron when they were going to get going against each other and stuff like that but Steph and Clay are the, the shooters they are the scorers they are I mean I really don't even think it would be close because Chris Bosh was pretty good right but he, good he, defender. he wasn't to the level that that Dwayne Wade and LeBron were when you're talking about Steph Curry Clay Thompson and KD you're talking about all three of those guys can get on any given night go crazy, go stupid on any given night. You know, you ever hear about Chris Bosh going really stupid. But um, I, I don't think it's close. I think if the two teams played each other in, in, in the playoffs, I think it'd be a five-game series at, at, at best for, for the Heat. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to put a number on uh, how many games it would be. You know, I was a, I was a Heat fan back in the day. But I think, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I totally – Wherever you go. Yeah, you know. Well, yeah, it's a different story. What are those? But uh, I mean, I can't help to agree, man. It's just that that mixture. I mean, like I said, I'll, that Warriors team in 2017 and 18, yeah, I think those are that's the greatest you know team I've I've ever seen. Probably, just, the, probably the greatest team we've ever seen personally with our own eyes. For sure, for sure. It's just it was too great of a mix together. It was too great of a mix, and man, you just. You got top three player, top three player here, second greatest shooter here, and they had good, you know, 
you uh, you get, toss in a Draymond, you toss in an Iguodala, toss in, you know. <laughs> other guys that can play. Yeah. Like, toss- you're talking about defensive player of the year and Draymond, Andre Iguodala. Yeah. And, and the coach. I mean, the Heat had a good culture too, but you know, the Warriors had a great culture too. Not just it, it was too good of a, it was too good of a, of a mix. Like I said, you know, and Dwayne Wade, yeah, his knees became shot after in about 2013, 14. Chris Bosch had his, you know, injuries here and there and the cat or the heat, excuse me. I think their role players started to get a little more older. Right. And so I, I mean, I, I like the, cause they were dogs to me, that heat team. I don't know how much of the dogs the Warriors are, but just they're a juggernaut. They're a juggernaut. That's how I'm, that's, that's, that's that simple. Simple, plain and simple. You know, how does take saying that uh, the Patriots had those, you know, in this past draft this weekend, those 10 picks. Didn't draft a single, a single QB. Drafted a kicker, though. Drafted a kicker. Drafted a kicker. Maybe, he, maybe, maybe he's throwing the ball or something. They see something we don't. But <laughs> uh, they're going to roll out with that, you know, Stidham. The second year product, second or third year product, Jarrett Stidham out of Stevensville. But um, you saying that you kind of feel optimistic and relaxed and that you think they're going to win more games than the Buccaneers this coming up season. I think that, I think that's ridiculous. I think it's, I think it's just, I think it's mind blowing. Cause as much as that, that, that's a dynasty dynasty is over. They still might be good, but it's no dynasty without 12, regardless if he's downhill, it's no dynasty anymore. And I, I just think, I think it's, I think it's crazy that you believe that. Look, the Patriots, there's, there's always talk, and there's always just going to be talk about who is more valuable, Tom Brady or, or, or Bill Belichick. Well, now we're going to be able to see kind of how they how they react and how they play without each other. Now, Tom Brady's with the Buccaneers, and they have a really good team. So, like, let's let's judge that for what it is, and not just say Tom Brady is the one elevating them when you when they're adding when they just added Rock House. They have great receivers. They they just drafted a. Uh, specimen and, and worse uh, out of Iowa. So the Bucs are going to be really good. So we know, we know they're going to be good. All right. The Patriots though, I think they're really going to show, you know, what they're about. Bill Belichick could have drafted a quarterback if he wanted to. And after the draft, he was like, we were trying to draft a quarterback, but we didn't really know how uh, it was going to go. And we ended up just not drafting one, but like, it wasn't our plan not to draft one, but you drafted a kicker. So if you really wanted a quarterback and needed a quarterback, you would have gotten a quarterback. I think what they have instead on is, they feel really good about. And not only that, but what they have as an organization as a whole. Whoever goes in there at quarterback is going to be successful. We saw it with Matt Castle. Tom Brady went down. Matt Castle goes in and wins 10 games. Well, or wins 11 games. They go 11 and 5. They go 11 and 5. And then Matt Castle, the same quarterback that did that with the Patriots, goes to the Cowboys where Romo goes down. And what, what do you win? One game? Well, one game, the Cowboys went like 4 and 12 that year. So you're talking about the same quarterback in Dallas that was in New England. And so my point is, man, I, I I've always thought Bill Belichick was more was was more valuable, but I never thought that Tom Brady was not valuable. But right. confidence they have not to go out and draft a quarterback. I just gotta believe the Patriots are gonna be more the more successful than in the Buccaneers. So the Matt Castle thing, though, you got to think. I mean, it's a different team going from the you know the, when he inserted uh, for Romo when Romo got hurt. Right. He's playing with a different playing with a different team, a little bit, and you know a different coach than when he had a fill-in for uh, Tom Brady back in... Uh, well, that's what I'm saying. The organization of the Patriots is... is yeah. Awful. Organization, yes, but, like, collectively, uh, like a unit, I would think. I, this Patriots defenses and offense lines, I've always, at least the defenses for sure, I've always been, you know, near top 10 and uh, every every single year. But um, I think it's... Top it's top 10? They've lost some players. They lost. They lost. They lost quite a bit. They always lose players, man. They're always getting rid of Chandler. We saw it with Chandler Jones. We saw it with uh, the what I went to, uh, to to Cleveland. What's his name? Call Jamie Collins. Jamie Collins. We've seen it. We've seen it all over. They they get rid of superstars all the time, and they, they, their success doesn't change. Sure, sure. That's fair. That's that's fair. But I I I think you're. I think you are more. Um, Bill Belichick stubborn. All right. I think he's stubborn and that's fine because he's the greatest coach, you know, probably ever. But I think I really feel like he wants to do this without Brady. You know, he yeah. that, I mean, that's been stories out. Right. It's been stories. You know, he wants to do this out Brady. And I think by him not drafting a quarterback, you know, with those 10 picks, I think I think he I think he's stubborn. He's like, I don't need one. I got Stidham. It don't matter who I got. I got this guy. Is that what you're saying? Huh? Trying to make a point? He, I think. Yeah, I think he's, I think he is trying to make a point. I, I think he's going to get into his head and I don't think 
that especially get over the Bucks, they're they're not winning more games. I don't care who Brian Hoyer or Jarrett Stidham or whoever it is. They're, they've lost defense players. They've uh, they have no weapons really. You know, they they're a little outdated team. You know, we're in twenty twenty. I think they're more of an outdated team. They're not really skilled heavy anymore. You know, um, they have Randy Moss obviously, but they got the. Tom yeah, but they don't Brady, have, you know, has always been able to work with his weapons. Bill Belichick has always given Tom Brady the right weapons to help him work. Why wouldn't Why won't he able to be able to do that with with Stidham or any other quarterback that's back there? He didn't give him the right weapons last year. That's for sure. But I think Stidham. I think Stidham's gonna have a lot of pressure. I think he's, he's gonna have a lot of pressure. You know, you're filling yeah. in for arguably the, you know the go, the greatest of all time, and you know I th- I think he's got you know some pressure on his shoulders to go out and be the successor and go out and win a lot of games. And I just, I just don't see it with kind of the team they have. And like you said, they recycle a bunch of players. They do, but with not 12 in there and it's a lot of different players, a lot of different locker room now, you know, I just think it's going to be really tough. And what they've put over there in Tampa that, you know, that offense they got and the defense to be determined, but Tom Brady with Bruce Arians and with those weapons, I think, you know, I think they I think they win. I think they win more games in a tougher NFC than what an AFC is. Yeah, no, there's no doubt the team is better. And um I, I just don't want us to get to get it twisted with oh Tom Brady's the one doing that work because he's got a lot more around him. But I think even even given that, given you know, given that consideration with everything with what Tom Brady has, uh, I think Bill Belichick is really gonna show us something. And you I say, you know you, you gotta know the you got to know, though, Tom Brady's going to get that credit if they're successful. You know he's going to get it. He's got it. If, the, if, if the Patriots come out and they're really not worried about a quarterback and Stidham is what they think he is, which I'm assuming they think he's, he's, he's pretty oh, yeah, I'm, quarterback, I'm, man, it remains to be seen. But this season is definitely going to let us know, not just this season, but season's coming ahead. Yeah, I think they're a little too optimistic with Stidham. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see about him. All right, so garbage time. We're really just going to be talking about – uh, whatever's whatever's on our mind, you know, kind of close this thing out, and uh, you know, garbage time. It's just the, the clock's ticking. Uh, we're nearing the end, and uh, yeah. So you know, I really want to talk about the last dance last night. I mean, I know it was a little part of the show already, but yo, know, Dennis Rodman was crazy, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, he was a he was a character. He just was, he, was, he, was, he was out there. <laughs> It's crazy. What I think is crazy is that, like, I don't know if you would have survived in today's day and age with like social media and all that. Um, it'd been tough. They'd have killed him. Yeah. They'd have been. They'd have been all over him on on a uh, on social media. Yeah, and then think about other other kinds of players and stuff like that. Or think about it the other way too. Like, if we we know KD with the whole burner accounts and everything, if he was yeah. right back then, he would have been like, yeah, the media would have gotten on him a little bit, you know. And yeah, stuff but stuff like that, not that that would even happen at that time because it's right. Like, but. You can reverse it too, and just talk about how much easier it would be for certain players who do kind of have that uh, insecurity, if you want to call it. Yeah, no, Dennis. Dennis was a he was a he was definitely a character, and I think yeah, I think I think social media and you know there's how we live in a little you know more sensitive people, and I think I think they would have think they would have attacked him. I think he would have been he'd have been like an outlier out here, and it would have been just it would have been it have been crazy for him. Although you know we see more of Dennis nowadays, as you know. Uh, or more acceptable and stuff. Right, right. But I think, yeah, I think as an athlete, people, you know, seeing him. If you ask for a mid vacation in the middle of the damn year, bro, wow. you're going, you're going to get, you're going to get towards. That's crazy. That that's what had me. I was like, damn, that's crazy. Now, side note as well, um, also uh, relevant to, to to this documentary is apparently they documented Kobe last season too. So I'm excited to see uh, what that's all about and if you know how they're able to do that. Um, obviously the sixty sure. game that he had, the, the retirement game was, yeah. was extremely documented. Apparently, they had like more cameramen than like ever before, so that's going to be exciting. I'm a huge Kobe fan, so I'm excited for that and whatever that. Uh, no, that'll definitely that'll definitely be man. That that thing will that thing will be that thing will be lit up. It'll be great. Hey, now, yeah, they got to let us know when that's coming out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's. I'll take it whenever, man. I'll take right. it whenever, as long as we can see it. That's it. You know, we've had this draft this past weekend, and I think it's easy to say in my – I'm 22, so I've probably been watching football, with, you know, knowing what's going on since about seven or eight, whatever, and uh, or before, before, whatever. I think the Packers had the worst draft in recent memory. The Green, Bay, 
the Green Bay Packers. You draft Jordan Love. That's I'm not. It's not that Jordan Love as a player that makes it a bad pick because I think he could be something. Like I like, yeah. you know, I like his, I like his, I like his upside, and I think he could be some. It's the team who picked him. You're, the Aaron Rodgers, what thirty five? Yeah. What you just went to the NFC Championship, right? Why pick somebody and then follow that up with a running back that when you got Aaron Jones is really good. So you're driving a backup quarterback and pretty much a backup running back, maybe third string running back to help out your team that just won the NFC championship and your 35 year old quarterback. That it don't make sense to me. And if I'm Aaron Rodgers, F it, I'm asking for a freaking, I would ask, request a trade, bro. Their front office has always been incompetent and they, they never, they've never went out. They have more recently gone and got getting uh, free agents. They always would sign their own players. I just think he has never been, you know, um, He's had talent in areas, but they just never, you know, gave him the most, I think. I think they've been too too complacent on what they give what they give Aaron Rodgers. I just think it was a terrible draft from the from the Packers. It was awful. It was a terrible draft. I agree. I, I don't think Aaron's job is in question and oh no. I, mean, I consider a trade, but as far as like myself and without even considering a trade, uh, you're safe, man. Like I don't want to hear all, all this talk about Jordan Love's coming to take his job. You're talking about oh, Aaron. I don't believe I don't believe that Jordan Love's taking his job. I just believe if he wants to, you know, he's in the, you know, the downhill of his career, you know, last few, few years left. Does he think what, you know, he's experienced with the last 14, 15 years that he can go get a title with that, you know, with that front office and that, you know, organization. And I wonder if that's, if he, if he really feels that, Hey, we can actually win a title, especially after seeing what they just did. I don't know, man. It remains to be seen, I guess. For sure. All right, that's it, y'all. Thanks for tuning in. This is the Online's podcast airing Mondays and Fridays. You saw how the show was. This is how we're going to bring it to you every single time, man. We're going to have fun doing it. Make sure you hit that like, subscribe button, social media, everything, Instagram, Twitter. We're all over that. We're going to put the, the information in the bio. So make sure you check that out. And check us out. We're going to be coming every time. Yes, sir. Go. Yes, sir, man. Like you said, all that follow, give us follow, and we're going to bring it to y'all, man. Bring it, let's go.